today I'll be showing you how to use x86 instructions in the fourth programming language. In this case, I'll be using Swift fourth. And we're going to write the simplest x86 program I could think of, which is EBX increment. All it does is add one to the top of the stack. So you can think of it as just adding one. And what you see to the left and right of the red box is just, uh, I will cover later, but the heart of the program is EBX increment. So we will get right to it and we'll just, you know, write that out. And if I just put, you know, anything on the stack, you know, three, for example, we can run our code increment top and it's just going to, you know, increment it by one. And we can do this, you know, as many times as we want to, and it's going to do exactly that. So you're probably a little bit confused about what this extra stuff is to the left and right. So I'll cover that. Basically, if you want to write in assembly using Switchforth, you have to always use I code if you want to, you know, use assembly. And then here we have just the name of our uh, assembly word. So we could call it uh, pretty much anything we wanted to. We could call it um, we could just call it increment uh, top of stack or anything. We could do we could pretty much name it anything and it's still going to run the same. So this right here is just you can name is your name of your assembly word and at the end right here we have return and end of code and these this just means you know to return something and if you have i code at the beginning then you have to use this at the very end so that's kind of something you will always see in these assembly words and to disassemble this word you type in c and just type in the word you created and you can see the source code in assembly so all we have at the heart of this is just ebx increment and return so it's pretty straightforward to write these assembly uh, words. So what I'm going to do is we're going to cover a little bit more deeper because it gets a lot more complicated than this. All right, if we want to make our code a little bit more complicated, we have to look up more assembly words. So what we can do is type in locate and then we can type in increment and what will it will do is it will locate where that file resides the folder path and it will give you kind of a snippet of what comes after that word so we can see we've got a bunch of jump instructions jump not equal jump if zero and you know jump and branch all these other things that um that i'll cover in a moment but real quick if you want to go back and forth in this file you type in n and it will show kind of the next little snippet and you can type in b which will go back so n and b will kind of go back and forth in this file or you can just open the file you know to see everything so let's go back to that word 
we had a word right here decrement which we can use in our you know assembly words so i'll create a new word called test assembly and we'll just decrement the top of the stack and what i'm going to do is just you know put in a two run test assembly and it should decrement it down to one and that's what it does so you can see we've got you know increments and decrements and we're writing assembly so we can go a step further and i'm going to show you in the next part how to do the move instruction the move instruction is one of the most useful x86 instructions and I'll show you how to locate that word you just type in locate move and right here it will give you a hint it will say source and destination and for the most part I usually ignore this uh, I'm always looking at this part first before I kind of go into this section so what we, because this is a x86 thing, we need to put this in an iCode type of format. So what I'm going to do is overwrite that word test assembly. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the top of the stack, which is EBX, and we're just going to move it. And this code should not do anything and it doesn't so what we need to do is add a few more things and I'm going to show you the next instruction which will be the the add instruction so like I said before if you want to find these instructions you just type in locate add and we see it right here so what we can do is use this in our codes ebx ex move and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to type a number you can use any number that you want to i'm going to type in three pound sign and what i'm going to do is in that eax register i'm going to add three so that's all that code is doing So we'll run it again and let's try two. So I've got two on the top of the stack and right here I'm adding. So you would think that I would get five, but uh, that's not the case. It doesn't do anything just yet. We have to add one more thing, which is we need to move it out of this register and we need to move it to the top of the stack, which is EBX. So what we can do is type in EAX, EBX, and move. And if you remember our hint, source, destination. So the source is EAX, which contains, you know, the number we added to it. We want to take that and move it to our destination, which is the top of the stack. So we can put, you know, a two or any number and we can just test it out and we see we get a five. So it doesn't matter what we do. It's always going to add three and so forth now we'll cover jump instructions and these are a little bit tricky but i came up with a example called is less than 10 and what this does is it checks to see if we have a number that's less than 10 and if we do we will put a negative one on the top of the stack and in swift forth you can use if statements inside of your assembly code and I'll cover how to use this in a moment. But if we 
disassemble this, it's just going to look like what you see on the right, which is we have A, which is 10 in hex. Move it to the EAX accumulator register. And then we're going to compare. And if we have something that is less than uh, 10, we'll put a negative one on top of the stack. So if you look right here, we see those two addresses match up 48762D. So we're going to jump. If we have no match, we just exit the program. So basically, that's what JNL stands for is jump if not less than. So if we have a number that's like 12, then we're just going to exit the, the program and do nothing pretty much. So we will cover this. I'm going to uh, put this on or copy this in there. And to dis disassemble this word, you type in C and just type in your word. And you can see that it will disassemble and show you exactly what it's doing. So you can see that we don't even have our if statements in there, but they translate into jump statements. So you'll see this in a lot of the Swiftforth code. If statements will translate to, you know, jump statements. So let's test this out. We'll put uh, two, we'll say, is that less than 10? And yes, it is. So we put a negative one. Three is less than 10. Yes, it is. So let's try like 12. So in this case, it does nothing. We just put a 12 and we just basically, you know, exit out of our program. So if we put like 13 or 14, it will just put, you know, whatever on the stack. So you can see that this is kind of how it works and so forth. So if we want to maybe change this a little bit, we can, uh, like, let's say, for instance, we want, we don't want to just put, you know, 12 or 13 on the data stack. We want to put a zero if it's greater than. So what we can do is we can put an else statement in there. We can say else put a zero on top of the stack. So we can rewrite this code. And let's disassemble it just to see what's going on. And we can see that our else statement was translated into a jump statement. So let's test this one out. Two is less than 10, negative one. So we'll put like 15, is that less than 10? And we should get a zero. And sure enough, we get a zero. So you can see how you can use if else statements using the fourth syntax, and you can embed it inside your assembly words, and they will automatically translate into x86 instructions. And that's all I got for now. So leave a like, subscribe, and let me know what you think.